Welcome back there, friends. We are moving on on the upper bracket side of things, but we're changing up the regions just a tough. Heading down to the southeast seed, it's Florida Gulf Coast and Kennesaw State. Yowls. This is going to be a primetime matchup here, Cash. I'm actually really excited about this. Both these two schools returning from last year, and at moments in time, they threaten top 25 rankings and possible playoff contention. So this should be another good one, hopefully, for us. I... I think that'll definitely be the case between these two schools. I mean, you think you had a crack at Division One, now you find yourself fighting for your Division Two lives to try to <laughs> stay in, you know, one of these more top-seeded divisions. And between both of these squads, I mean, it feels like a clash of the Titans in a sense where, again, you threaten being on the same level of, like you said, breaking in the top 25. Now here, you're battling to try to get earlier, um, you know, seeding into Division Two. Both of these squads are going to be duking it out. I mean, Again, the fact that someone has to go down to the loser's bracket after this is insane yeah. because these just feel like, just like you said, potential teams that both could punch their tickets into it. And now we have this matchup in winner's round two. Madness. Yeah. And looking at what FGCU, how they got to this point so far, haven't had to play anybody. <laughs> so first matchup for them after the bye. And that is earned, by the way, after they were initially knocked out by Mars Hill. Or I said, pardon me, not knocked out, but knocked down by Mars Hill uh, last weekend, and then put together a pretty lengthy lower bracket run, eventually having it being ended by Newberry College. Uh, so that's kind of how their pathway has gotten to where they are at the moment. Whereas for a school like Kennesaw State, things a little bit different. They actually got beat up a little bit by Full Sail Armada, and uh, then eventually had their run ended by University of Alabama, Huntsville Blue, another school that's returning from last season so no wins on the board anywhere yet for ksu which i think is probably the most surprising part about their run so far except until they just beat duke a moment ago it's one where you got to ride the momentum train while you have it though you don't have wins up until tonight it's not something that can't change on the drop of a hat the really? same thing could be said for you know any other teams that we see here so uh, again maybe that's just a little kickoff a little fire starter that they needed to together a winner's bracket run that in a few short maps could punch them their ticket into qualifying for division two so we'll see what they're able to string together here for tonight new night new weekend and uh yeah. Yeah, what do they have in the bag against a very stout as we've said many times for the golf coast team yeah i think the expectations are again that these two teams should be pretty level um i will say though that i think just based on i believe the amount of players for florida gulf coast that are returning in comparison to ksu there may, maybe is a slight experience advantage for the other side of things. But again, that's all kind of speculative. Uh, we'll obviously learn a lot more once we see these two teams start to square off and get into map against one another. Because again, we didn't really get a chance to watch them at all uh, on their opening runs, at least as of yet. So that's kind of where we're at at the moment between both these two teams. Again, the Southeast region, I anticipate, as it almost always is, will likely be, I think, the most competitive. Um, across both divisions i think division one looks really solid as far as the teams that we've got and there are still a ton of major contestants that are alive in towards this division two bracket that we've got um you know in particular kind of talking about the university of alabama Humpsman team they're still alive you got colonel esports from nickel state they were really good last year clemson looks improved this year i mean you can kind of go down the list and a lot of teams are returning um over the course of the last not just one year but multiple years um finding a lot of success throughout so this Southeastern Division 2 is going to be really hot no matter who the 12 teams are at the end of it. Yeah, I just glanced over to look at and get a refresher of who all had made it. And then you see the names, as you mentioned, that are missing that could have made Division 1. And knowing they're still alive and threatening in this bracket, um, definitely a scary sight for any of these teams. Uh, we say there are more teams every year, but the, I just it's still so mind-blowing how competitive it gets year after year. How many, how many mm. players um, look to invest in their programs and coaches as well and just make this just uh, the, the best collegiate program that you know we can get looks at players for at least what the cts put together man this is i just i can't believe it man i'm, I'm genuinely so mind blown at how good this competition gets i i love watching it it always it, I'm, this is like this is your first time coming back to the action for college content yeah it, it always feels really special it just always does uh also fun thing before we jump into the maps and modes uh the online version of the egg bowl happened mississippi state dropping to Ole miss 3-0 in qualifier two that just happened a little bit lower into the bracket so little in-state rivalry already started to pop things up which again we love for college god reasons but let's take a look at those maps and modes for this particular series don't want to stray too far from our focus here so getting a look at it we're going to have an embassy hard point to start an ls silo back to back for the search of the control and then we'll get our first potential look at mercado hard point 
and it's going to be capped off by also a follow-up in fifth and final map that would be an embassy search. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like we were talking about off of the opening hard point that we saw in the last series on Hotel. Embassy kind of has the same ideas. It does reward you for winning on rotation, but most importantly, you do have to be flexible as a squad as the last two hard points on the fourth and the fifth largely do require you to bring out a third SMG if you want to be super competitive mm -hmm. on it. Yeah, it feels like a, a nice hybrid of hotel and fortress where things can get scrappy and mixy at times like a fortress place but you also have to work those diagonals of the map to win rotations at times so embassy another great look for teams that uh, again kind of the more fundamental elements as we had said earlier of hard point play and between these squads apart from the silo s and d i mean we're getting a completely different series up and down Oh, absolutely. It's going to be, I think, just a, a different look. I mean, we don't need to sit here and tell you about how the maps work. I assume if you're watching, you've watched plenty of competitive COD so far in this title. But it's always really fun for us to kind of revisit some of the things that were struggle points for other teams in the past and then see kind of how these teams that are a little bit newer into competing in their competitive season, how they handle those same problems. It's like sometimes you kind of forget at moments in time like, why was this map such a problem for teams early? Because the game adapts and changes very rapidly at the highest level, but it does obviously take a little bit of extra time, I think, for our collegiate students to get into the scrims, get into the eights, and obviously as a squad, get their good rehearsal they need in regular competition, because mm -hmm. obviously we can't hold a fall season when the game releases in November. So I'm curious, I think, to see, you know, once more, like we continue to draw upon how many of the players that we're going to get in lobby have spent the time researching and just have kind of inherent idea of what needs to happen. And then like we saw kind of be a problem for our first matchup cash, who can actually execute on those principles because execution is usually where the downfall starts to occur. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. I think intention is one thing. Execution is a completely different Beautiful. thing. You can yep. mean to do so many things around the map, but how you actually put that into fruition, make that come alive for your team. That's what everyone here is feeling out. No matter how well rep you are, if you're, you've been playing tournaments since the opening of the game, or if this is kind of your team's first gelled together organized thing, it's something where like all teams are going to be figuring things out. They're going to be learning things continually as the year progresses. And uh, again, maybe that's what a lot of the ex or the points for these teams are this weekend is to go out, execute well. If it's a play call, even if it's the wrong one, executing it and we can fix that later, but kind of getting that team chem back built up and back on board as a new season kicks off. Absolutely. Woo, man, it's always so fun. I can't wait to see who's going to be good and who may not be. No, I'm just kidding. This is going to be a really cool, I think, format as well for the season, getting the instant breakdown. I think there's, you know, a lot of people that are out there saying like, oh, well, like we're not in Division One, so like our competition's not going to be as good. Like that's an old mentality. Like I could get that argument with the stage split up that we had last year. But I mean, the way that this all works out, you're really restricting how that little level is going to exist between Division One and Division Two, And if I'm being completely honest, I think if you were to throw all 24 teams into one round robin stage, you're going to get a lot of mixed results because we have such a great depth of talent this year coming in with mm -hmm. new schools, returning schools. And like we continue to mention, I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, we say this every year. Every single start of the season is the best start of the season for College Cod. The numbers keep mm -hmm. going up. The veterancy keeps going up. The prestige of players that are giving a look at College Cod are way up. And when you talk about players like Silly and Fame and all them, Noisy in the past, Ghosty in the past, playing through the ranks of College Cod, you're going to get some great talent now mm -hmm. really kind of being a staple of what the competitive integrity of this league looks like. And as you said, it could be a real layman statement, but to put it, I mean, the difference between team calling for Division 1 and Division 2 could be a matter of a map. It could come Absolutely. down to Game 5, yep. Round 11. It is not a matter of, you know, like some crazy discrepancy of a uh, first-year college against a reigning champ in Northwood or something. Um, it, it can come down to a, a Game 5, Round 11 going your way or not. And so, uh, again, there is no so sort of drop-off between Division 1 and Division 2. Sure, your better teams might be winning more uh, dominantly at times, but uh, again, the teams that are trying to true whenever you get into this mid portion of things um and, and you really have to earn it in these late stages these late losers runs yeah there, there is a fine line that you're walking as far as who deserves a spot who doesn't it's who's going to come out and clutch up early on and the thing too about this format with a, a, a more i would say i i don't mean this a neg negative connotation but it's a more limited regular season schedule it puts a lot more pressure on those round robin matches when you're only playing you know, X amount of matches, every single game becomes super important because of how the playoffs also work. Again, we're kind of hinting back towards what the format for the whole year will look like, but that last chance qualifier <laughs> with quotations around it, that is the bulk of where playoffs are going to list. So, yeah. you know, you're going to get a mix of stage one or division one and division two teams 
no question that are going to be kind of vying for those top seeds and that means that like we continue to talk about every single game when we get into the regular season will matter of course we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here because we still need to qualify 12 teams but at least we'll get a pretty solid idea at least of who our top four will be for each region by the end of this evening before we qualify our final eight tomorrow um again all bets are off i think that both this region the one we just saw will be super competitive but we haven't even looked at the northeast yet nor really what we're going to get out of the midwest in full yet I think there's going to be a lot of extra action that we obviously just don't have the time to cover it all that we'll see some really shining stars really pop up. And I, I'm excited to see what the regular season will hold for whatever our 12 teams in both regions and both divisions will look like. Yeah, in this matchup, it looks like a perfect insight to that of a test of two coin toss teams. Look at our last series, a test of two teams yeah. duking it out. That, that series couldn't have gone on much longer. It went to a game five round 10 before it closed out. This one I could see going the exact same direction. Uh, again, the trends uh, continue to go upward for these teams as far as competition levels go and what they're able to bring. And there's just there's so much to watch all the time that you're going to end up checking College Cup Twitter and being like, oh, this team qualified. Oh, this one didn't. Oh, this one did. As you said, yeah. shining stars popping up. Uh, there's going to be so much going on, so much to play for. I love when the matches matter as much as they do this season with the formatting. Um, it's going to mean you have to bring your A-game night in and night out, and it starts on night one for some of these yeah. teams. And bless up to whoever our top 25 voting panel is this year. Your job is going to be extremely difficult. So <laughs> have not fun me, with that. <laughs> I, I, I said no, not this year. I, there's just so much that's going to be happening. But we're ready to go. Enough little jibba jabba. Let's get into the action. Kennesaw State and the Owls taking up against FGCU. Embassy Hardpoint. Ash, let's get it on. Yes, UConn putting a lot of emphasis on this mid map portion. They lose the first couple gunfights. You're just trying to overlook the hard point for now. Let's keep Florida off of it where Florida Gulf Coast opting towards this bottom P2 side, which is where we'll make our rotation about 30 seconds. Only seven or eight seconds of time earned after 30 if ticked by. So neither team putting much emphasis on this for now. Really putting that focus on back spawns, Embassy, player eight, gonna have a handful here in just a second. Ooh, at least he's able to take one before getting traded. Yeah, and now looking across the rosters, yeah. Kirch back, Justin back, Wheels back. I don't know if Beaster is new or not, but name sounds familiar. But a lot of this squad is returning from last year. And I will say just kind of a lot of the focus from last year came down to who was the best team in Florida. It took us a while to finally get the action. We got our answer, and it was, um, well, let's just say it was not Florida Gulf Coast. <laughs> but <laughs> jokes aside, Florida uh, FGCU looking pretty solid, at least for now. The problem is, as much as the kills are decent, no one's been able to get into the hard point time as of yet. Finally, that gets corrected, but KSU quick on the approach to contest. In Florida, holding from the front for now, you have just one player left in fam. They have an idea, but as long as they're giving it to you from the front... Florida have no reason or no issue not pushing for these back spawns. Two players get to fly around, maybe watch their back. Look emphasis towards P3, where uh, again, Will's able to win a big gunfight there. You're still holding this time with 25 seconds left. If you can lock down this rotation, I mean, we can see this game take quite the opening early on. It sure feels that way. I mean, Wheels is in a great position, as you mentioned. He doesn't even get revealed by the stun. So Snake will come forward, and as he was slightly tagged up, Wheels wins the key gunfight. But keep in mind, the second hard point is still active for another six seconds. So look at the spawns for KSU. They're actually going to be kind of surrounding this hard point, and Wheels, who does not have a trophy, will eventually be bested. Perch on the way in doesn't have the ability of getting the trophy down because he's just flat out overwhelmed. So again, it's one of those things where you're kind of fighting on both fronts, and even though FGCU don't get scrapped to initial, they've done well to kind of put the pressure on the KSU, even more so that Beloved is the last one standing for the Owls. And you've also earned a near 60 second cushion if you're Florida Gulf Coast. So again, you definitely don't have to break in with the utmost urgency, though they do anyway and are continuing to run up the score line. Over 60 points through the first hill and a half and no signs of KSU present to try and contest this. Maybe Beloved here in a moment at range, gonna try to close distance, but for now, if you win this gunfight, another near full 60 coming in. Oh, good prediction Ooh. from Beloved and the double does come down. So now, finally, some decent time here for KSE to work with. Slow start from Snake, just 2 and 10. Would love to see that start to improve if you're an Owls fan, obviously. But after you see you forfeiting the scrap time, we'll have numbers here at new. Once again, you got to keep in mind, the hard point's not active yet. So Justin's going to spawn all the way out, which means that the Owls have a chance to early threaten this. Stun's on the way in, start to land. Snake for the entry, but... Unfortunately, not enough follow-up, and as Rose will drop, FGCU will get the time and the spawn. Starting to branch out to set up the zone out beyond the hard point. You have your wing AR players taking top and bottom side of the map. Wheels is able 
find one. The other two players sitting in tilt head on a swivel where this next push is coming from and lining them up just to knock them down already across the 100 point mark through three and a half hills. Casey caught all but silenced here through this opening yeah. start. Yeah, I'll say. Very convincing. And here's the thing that's impressive is, you know, I challenge you guys at home to kind of keep your eyes more so on the minimap. Watch how fast FGCU are at least throwing one, if not two members to threaten key positions on these rotations for KSU. It's not just that they're rotating and they're running into the new hard point where it's eventually going to open up. They're winning these key positions to kind of keep KSU pinned into a corner. And it's very difficult, no matter how good you are, when you're put into a position like that, you have to put together a response because your spawns are threatened, your hard point is threatened. Kurt's also showing a couple of wall bank spots that may start to work out in the future. But KSU have done well bunkering up. They've got the help of some trophy systems and numbers as they finally were able to thwart FGCU on their initial attempt. Tend to play developing around the hill. You at least take care of one angle. Or you knock down one, another will rise up, and a pinch developing once again out of Florida Gulf Coast. When do they want to strike? Bro's locking things down on this bottom portion of the hill, but the rest going to bully through the front, and that'll be the entrance they need. The clearance they need to get back in. Though you get 30, 35 seconds of time. I mean, we said this game had the potential to blow open early with how yeah. Florida are applying pressure around the map. That is going to be the case. You cannot afford to give up many more, even 25 second portions of time without a full 16 response. Yeah, agreed. But KSU are going to kind of pick and choose their battles. They have the opportunity of doing that for a little while longer here, considering that you expect the first hard point to be pretty mixy, if not largely neutral. But it would require them to win a rotation to the second hard point. And Beezer on four gets caught on the mantle. Nearly a chance to get up towards the bridge. We've got high ground v high ground battles. Perch beloved staring longingly at one another. But Perch actually just jumps down low. Or if it's the bridge position, that leads to high ground control for KSU. So again, the hard point stays a bit neutral for now. But the spawns are starting to flip around here, Cash. FGCU are mostly working for the right side of the minimap. And they can find this kill here to beloved. They have completed the task of doing so. And we've got a 100-point game with FGCU now in control of the P2 side of the map for now. How many times have we said, and you said this entirety, Hill still open. KSU able to slip through the back. Phantom gets the kill as well. So as much as Florida had control of P2, once again, it's taken away from them. Maybe numbers here towards the bottom side. I mean, they held a majority of it from the front. So I can imagine they have no problem doing that once again as Justin oh, here is on four, making its way over to P2. Florida Gulf Coast retaining its control early on, but a quick, well-thought-out effort coming in from KSU to the back. Okay. Long-range shots are also starting to land. Last player up for FGCU and the Eagles is Kirch. He's done well to get two and keep the contest alive, but eventually overwhelmed. Health quickly on the way. Good read from Snake. How about that to kind of wake you up a little bit? Three in a row. A beautiful little reaction to the play around the back, and now FGCU's break attempt is largely going to have to come through Van's side, which Beloved is already aware of. Nades and stuns are going to connect. This is a difficult gunfight, though, with a Vaznev, and now FGCU and the Eagles have the numbers. 28 seconds to fight for. KSU maybe more avidly looking towards rotation and the timing of that call. Maybe a bit too early because the break comes out and now FGCU can get above 190. Setting that one condition closer and closer. I mean, you only need 60 seconds when it's all said and done to close this one out. P3, quite the hill to get it done, KSU. Really have to start to work things out. Rose is going to creep up the ladder and, well, with Florida Gulf Coast watching it, that's going to be an easy read on the pre-aim. And B, sir, I mean, tearing him apart. Wow. Four, finds four in a row to go on a five spree. This one... Feeling all but done in Dustin Allen. Yeah, it sure is. Would have to have a break plus two sequential holds afterwards. And they, oh, okay, let's start with getting a couple of kills. That would be helpful as well. Wow. FTCU just dominant here in this opening hard point. And a lot of credit to the prep, the planning, and the, again, we've talked about it, intent versus execution. I think both of those two factors have met evenly and been bridged nicely by this FGCU team. Good win here. I believe they'll get the last second, although Snake on the contest will likely change that. But Beaster's on seven. Make it almost eight and nine if he gets the Collat lineup. And Florida Gulf Coast, I think at this point, they're saying, screw leader's advantage. Let's put these guys in the club. Trying to get this one closed out. Your KSU. Trying to get the gunny warmed up for next. About all you can do at this point. They're going to try to do what they can to get a setup. But as you said, Florida constantly moving around the map, constantly challenging these positions. And not letting KSU get comfortable. Do go down on transition, make that three, and you'd think the fourth would come in tow. Not a matter of if, but when. Yeah. Justin will connect for it. Eight seconds left. Florida Gulf Coast, more than convincing that one.
it. That's this is gonna feel really good for FGCU. Not having to had play a first winner's round matchup due to their bye, thanks to their performance in qualifier number one. You come out and you club KSU, who is not a team to be taken lightly. So great stuff from FGCU, and I, I just have to re-hit it again. That is just really impressive clinical work from FGCU. Now, granted again, you know, them convincingly winning in the kill feed makes life really easy to go from scrap to initial and win on rotation while doing so, but their timings, their commitment as far as numbers and how they were moving around the map between ARs and SMGs looked really fluid. And it just was, I, I would say, again, near picture perfect from start to finish from FGCU early on. Yeah, we talk about how contested and scrappy a embassy can play at times. When you don't give a team the opportunity to make it scrappy, it can look yes. like what a hotel hardpoint would. It can look very dominant whenever you can influence the map the way that they did. Uh, the fact that it's in such close quarters gives it that opportunity. The Florida gave it no such life. And as you said, you sit around, you wait for this matchup to come. You win map one the way you do. Has to be feeling good. Kennesaw are coming off of a win just to get stunned early on. Definitely at odds here in this series already as far as both of these squads go and the momentum they thought they could have had coming into this one. Feeling good if you're Gulf Coast going into an LSC low control and if you're KSU, yeah. you get to go to a mode where you can slow things down, maybe take things at your own pace and find a way to battle back. Yeah, and, and I'm, this is interesting that you kind of start to go down that conversation wheel because I feel like very regularly when we get to the early season and we see big mismatches, this also, by the way, does not exclusive to College Cod. We say this in Challengers as well is teams that are slow to kind of pick things up and respawn, you have to be great at Search and Destroy. That's mm. your only chance to stay into a series, and it never feels fun to say, but after a dominant performance like that where you can see the kill tallies and a non-traded kill percentage across the board for FGCU, those numbers are indicative of just individual skill being a little bit better. You cannot go down 0-2 and, have to rever and force a reverse sweep. Like, it, it sucks to say, but I think if you're at Kennesaw State, you got to come out and you have to win this search and destroy if you want to have a chance in this series based on what we just saw. And to, and to back you up even more on that, it, it does feel so dire and dramatic to say a must win, otherwise the series is over this early on. But uh, again, with the way the game plays, uh, with the way and, and how lopsided this first map has gone, it definitely is one that you can't afford to, to lose not only a respawn, but a search back to back and expect to uh, fare well in a series, especially against a team that wins with the respawn dominance Florida just showed in this one. Now, you could have been caught lacking, you could have been got slow, but as you said, you can't afford that any longer in this series. This is yep. one where if you want to qualify early on and have an easier run to get to Division Two qualifiers and uh, punch your ticket in, you have to bounce back in map number two and still find a way to win a respawn against this team. Absolutely. I like the calls. I think that's enough on it. Let's take a look to see how exactly this series will now look after a convincing map number one. We already kind of talked about it, Ellis Cielo, not just for the search, but also the control. And look, it almost feels like when you have Mercado Hardpoint looming as map number four, it almost puts a little bit of weight on KSU to also have to win the control just because of how Mercado functions similarly to Embassy. It's mm -hmm. going to force you to have to outslay your opponent. So... I don't know. I don't want to put that in front of us and say that this is the dinner table. Come sit down to some negative news here if you're KSU. But <laughs> it all starts with this LSU low surge. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, you put this one in your back pocket. You extend it to at least see a map for. I, you start to feel a little bit better about your prospects of trying to pull off something here against this very mm -hmm. resound FGCU team. And if we want to zoom back in and maybe give it to more bite-sized pieces as far as what you could do with your KSU to... to get back into this to start to feel like you're doing things a little bit better it starts with well, first insertion of stories specifically for that mode winning first blood that's definitely a big step that'll help but but yeah. trading effectively is going to be a huge part of do ksu have what it takes to bounce back in the series i think how you can trade between a respawn and a search destroy all the same you have to find a way to not let players go on sprees and completely light you up in the kill feed that's going to keep the game manageable that's going to keep you in situations where instead of a 3v1 you're looking at a 1v1 or a 2v2 sure i think that's a big and easy point case you can focus on going into this map that, that isn't anything outside of the realm of manageability that does take a lot of discipline though here's the thing is like if you're looking to really invest into those first blood engagements and here's the thing about it when you say first bloods i i know that you you're there to mean it's not just you have to get the first kill but it's coming out on top yeah. of those first blood engagements whether it's a one for one trade or a one for two or two for one you want to be on the favorable side advantageously either by position or by numbers and that does require you the ability to have good set plays for how you're going to use opening utility so it does mm -hmm. require planning 
And once again, intent plus execution, which I love that phrase, by the way. I'm just going to keep using it. I'm just <laughs> steal it right away from you. But All that, yours. It, just, it really does come down to that's where I, I like the idea of that. And I think it's a really cool thing for us to kind of just kind of train our eyes towards early on in these rounds to see how KSU handle I know the heat that's just instantly been thrown their direction. Mm -hmm. and, and to continue talking about the point that we have, I think this might drive it home a little bit more. We talk about how year to year the competition goes up. You say how much discipline that requires. Welcome to the CCL. It's going yeah. to require you to play that disciplined Call of Duty at this level. If you want to be a team playing in Division 2, you're going to have to have that discipline. Now, again, it is early on, right? And there's still stuff for me. It's not to say if Kennesaw lose this in a, in a dramatic fashion, they can't rally back and make a late run or anything like that. Or again, even at the sure, start of the sure. season, it's just more so framing up that you will consistently have to be a more disciplined team than not. Otherwise, you will get punished by teams that do play more disciplined. I know that sounds like easy math when you sort it out, but again, welcome to this level of competition. You want to play at the highest level, you're going to have to play like a team that deserves to be at the highest level. Yep. They absolutely have the makings too. This is all talk to, to voice them up to say they have the potential they can meet. They came out flat in map number one and I think we've just about diced this onion up every way that KSU could try to bounce back. No tears though. Hey, we're good on that <laughs> from dicing there up this onion. So <laughs> small W's. But uh, it's an interesting conversation point. I don't mean to get too podcasty, but we, I think we have the time to, at least at the moment. Um, you know, the structure of how the league has moved, you know, to kind of force teams to have to be um, pretty well, you know, set up going into the year, I think it's most famously made kind of a factor in the CCL, started by Concord. Um, you know, Modern Warfare 19, everyone was looking at Texas A&M. You have recent black ops 4 world championship participants that are making up two fits of that team um so you kind of look at them as like the easy quote-unquote favorites they've got top tier you know open division players that ha were just at worlds and look pretty good so like how do you beat those guys and i think until that point a lot of people looked at their college cod team saying we just need to get better players until concord came around and they found a way to take players that had never touched challengers before, had never really touched the open brackets before, and take Texas A&M to two different best of fives to full reset in the grand finals. That kind of set the tone that, hey, we could just work and, you know, just get better as a squad. And that yeah. may be enough to take down teams that may have more individual skill, you know, as they start to come out of things like challengers and things of the nature. And I think the FGCU may be kind of another example of that, just based on the fact that Absolutely. you really don't have a high hitting player that we know for a fact is, you know, going to be competing at the highest level in challengers, for instance, which is going to be the case um, at, at least for a number of squads uh, getting into this regular season. So it's an interesting standard that's been set Shout out to Concord and those that have followed in their footsteps. Yeah, and it's one that uh, goes to show the importance of building a solid foundation. You know, as we dive into this podcast rabbit hole while we have the time, it is one that goes to show how important the groundwork is for these programs, right? It's not necessarily the flashiest or best performing names the challengers. It's can you get a, a group of players on board to buy into the same mission, to put in the same effort of work, uh, to really build a program from the ground up? And I think that's something that college caught offers that you can't really find in challengers to yeah. an extent because of that college layout because of that university tradition type thing and now that we've dived dove into the action once more florida golf coast we were just singing their praises about being a squad that finds a way to gel teamwork and make things work how can they come out here in the search and destroy mm. and get things going to map two love this nade that's enough to get the tag no trophy systems in round number one but interesting enough, even though First Blood comes the way of KSU, they don't follow up after the tag is in, and that's enough for Justin to isolate a 1v1. Love's still playing on the corner. Wheels nearby, just on the opposite wall. And KSU have just hit the brakes completely. Surprising to say the least. Finally, Blub gets a kill. It's on to Justin on the inside. Wheels responds, and now Kurtz kind of has to forfeit his position over towards B, and as he makes the rotation, he takes out a key kill to Phantom. Rose left alive, 1v2. How does this timing carousel go? I don't think it'll be the way of Rose here as he slips behind Bar, but I think player 7, and Wheels is quick on the chase, able to find the kills, and maybe making sure he's dead for good measure. Yeah. Florida Golf Coast State <laughs> round number one. You never know. All these zombie shows and movies that are coming out, you never know. But uh, this is now, you know, here, I'll, I'll just take this as a mantle moment to kind of pull out a PSA. Like, we saw it with Army West Point. We saw it there again. Like, if you can nade that tags, like, sure, he's got, you know, the, 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 the ability to kind of shrug off some of the damage because of the perk class he's put together. But, like, 
follow up on that, right? Like, mm-hmm. it, you, you've got the numbers, you've got the first blood. Just run into that 3v2 when you know you have a health advantage. Should lead to a free plant, but KSU kind of pumped the brakes a little bit too much. And see the round go a bit awry. Opening stuns, though, this time for KSU. Do land, keeps the offense away from the front doors of A. As you kind of saw for a moment there, Kirch is still kind of looking over towards the B site with his scope. Bomb. Edging closer and closer towards perhaps this A site, but so long as Kirch isn't saying anything, they have it in a position where you can get out this window and wrap towards B. Beloved will get the first blood, but I think Florida inching towards this B site as you see Phantom on the retreat. What can you find if your wheels? What can you do as players maybe starting to work in position for KSU? Wheels has gone through. The problem is he's the bomb carrier. So if anyone checks this, <laughs> FGC will instantly be behind the eight ball. Pistol out for Kirch. Beloved from behind takes the elimination, leaving now Justin for what would be a 1v4. He gets the first kill pretty rapidly, but technically speaking, this would be a full 1v4 ace. But the clock is maybe making this feel more like a 1v5 at the moment. Not a lot of time to work with. No dead silence. Got to do this the hard way. Did he see Beloved over the top? Surely he has now. And whoa, those are clean shots. No trade from the side door, so the bomb could get collected. And now a decision for Justin as he's going to have to get a plant off. Expects Rose on the corner, but just hindered a little bit too much from the opening. Exchange of gunfire and KSU keep us level at one. Offensively for Florida Gulf Coast, didn't he? Move quick enough towards the site before, again, Beloved up over the second first blood there, and this time they get the round win for it. Finding three in the round specifically was Beloved. Kept themselves in a good position to move side to side to segue back and forth from each point. They got the hint that something something wasn't right, edged towards B, and got rewarded for it there. Florida Gulf Coast now on your second defensive try. What adjustments do you make, if any, on this attempt? Ooh, how about this, KSU? You're going to full four-man hit on the outside. This is being watched, though, not by one, but two different players. Justin is stunned, so he can't get into the mix. But Beaser Deep has done a lot of damage, and he stayed fully healthy, but these utility nades continue to land on top of his head, and that's enough for KSU to cake first blood and the outside of the map. A heck of a call, but it works out nicely for the Owls, and now an opportunity for them to kind of decide what they want to do. Do you want to cut back into the middle and play for A, or do you want to go back towards B? You need to make a decision quickly, though, because Kurtz is on the flank deep, and that's enough to kind of now all of a sudden turn the tables and put KSU in the back foot. It's almost like they did half of the step we had asked them to their last offensive try. Fly and go quick behind the health, behind the attack advantage, and then they got stagnant once again, allowing Florida Gulf Coast to get back in position. It's still not over yet, but... Definitely slowed down their attempt, but you don't know where these other players are, and Snake doesn't care. Snake is... Snake's flying around. <laughs> Gotta respect it. That sounds, though, about to come to an end. He's deciding what he wants to do, and it looks like they're going to try to play to isolate this player on top. It's Kurge. He's caught with a stun out. Does not take down the first kill. Time, though, a problem. Wheels nearby. Watch the rotation. That's your bomb carrier down. 1v1, and Wheels has eluded the gunfight. Does he get back, though? Maybe deny the plant? Doesn't look that way. Semtex is down. He may have seen the shadow of Rose move to the right. And there's the gunfight. Haha, <laughs> cleanly won by wheels. And nope, don't don't try it, he says. That's exactly those are that's what he says completely. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Mm -hmm. Two defensive rounds. Coming down to a retake opportunity that Florida Gulf Coast come down on top of. And for KSU, I just it's a bit it's still just a step too slow, it feels like. They get themselves into good enough positions, but they hesitate right before committing to a site. Even if they didn't want a full wrap to be there, they didn't get back to the A site and clear out enough. They did a good job on the outer lane of the map. Feels like they're just one step from piecing it all together here. Yep. Beloved still having a good performance, but Florida Gulf Coast doing enough defensively to stay flexible on the reads. Small things though. These are all very marginal small things. This time, Beaster's going to toss a couple of nades to kind of give KSU something else to think about on the outside of the map. Oh, but the proactive play for KSU subs right onto the mix. And Snake for the double. Bomb carrier down. Phantom also taken down a third. And the information should be that, yep, Beaster's playing outside tower. That will be confirmed by Beloved. And now it's just don't isolate yourself. Don't give him a chance to pick apart one by one by one. That's the opportunity. But not taking any of these gunfights, trying to work back inside, but KSU making no move 
for this bomb. They want to find this kill. I mean, sure you have the time to, but you had said it. Don't give them three different 1v1s. And for now, I mean, he's sizing it up. Lots of time, but does not get the kill to extend the dead silence. So, Beaster becomes pretty stationary. ASU still opting to play a bit isolated. This bomb is collectible. Just having a little fun with the door, making sure no one's behind the corner. We'll create some noise, though, and that should be enough for Snake to make the call. Rose on the rotation. Snake up top. I think Rose is down low. Yeah, sure is. Now, actually, Snake gives up the high ground. They're looking for him on the plant, and oh, nearly <laughs> the 1v1 comes through for a second time. But KSU, quick on the punch, a great round from Snake. Three in the round, actually, I believe, to get this thing still leveled at two. I like the aggression Snake played with that round. Played a little fast and loose with it, and it got them the first two bloods. Got him into billiards very quickly off the opening break. Now offensively, does that pacing change? I think KSU, uh, again, I, I think for Search and Destroy, even on this map, or you could, you could look at many others, whoever can get control of that pacing first is also sitting yeah. fairly well, you know, because then you can dictate if you want to speed it up or slow it down, you have the other team guessing. KSU, once again, opting towards this outer lane. The stun check's going to come through and slow things down, and they're still mm -hmm. ready for it with two players, but who comes out on top of these gunfights? And Justin's playing close this time. He was not able to do this the last time around, but the unfortunate part about this is that Beezer, his kind of overwatched AR... Drops on the first blood. So KSU secure the trade, secure the kills. And now it's just Kirch down to a 1v3. He will be able to pick up an automatic weapon. It's a tack that he finds off of his teammate's dead body. And a quick call to hit the dead silence as he tries to regain space around A. But the problem is it's KSU planning at the B site. And they are so, so spread here. Uh, Rose would have to be a factor even if he tries to enter the site. Gets a good read though. And a great connection with the sniper. So now you'd like to think all of your fights are left in front of you. Unfortunately, clock working against you. 23 seconds or so to work the bomb with a seven and a half second defuse. So you got to go quickly. You do have the automatic weapon, as you said. Can you isolate one of these gunfights? And if he gets the kill inside, the love is going to be a hard pressed position to come back to this, but peek over the tree will work out. Yeah, I think it's the glass that breaks that allows them the sound cue to snap for the snipe. But as you kind of mentioned, it's still a hard-pressed 1v3 with the bomb planted in that position. You'll see it from Beloved's point of view. Vaznev at that range with that much time and that much cover, you expect it to come through, and it does. Couple straight. Four KSU to take. A well-executed offensive round. Finally, it feels like that third round was a culmination of what we had seen from them. <laughs> Coming to fruition there, Dream. and they're rewarded for it. Now for Florida, you need a good bounce back here. You'd hate to go down two rounds. As we said, the OKS, you were down after a hard map one loss. They are no team to sneeze at as far as things are concerned. Mm. Florida, don't want any kind of disadvantage in wheels. Going to do everything you can to keep them the advantage. Good first blood. ASU still in a position to contest, though. This was never a full stack in towards A, so you don't really lose too much. It's odd to say after the first blood. Wheels denied any opportunity to push further through window-to-window -window action. And Beloved is on a nice little flank here. He's going to have dead silence soon as well. And with that elimination, 10 minutes to a 3v3, he could technically wait here until the next point of contact comes out. And that may be the call. Not immediately going for the dead silence, but Justin forces the play. That's going to now activate. Rose has to go. Beloved has to make the play from the pinch. As FGCU start to have their eyes set towards A with the plant coming in. Teddy popped. Bomb going down A. Beloved, what can you find? Really nothing. Even play wrapping to the back. You're not going to get the yeah. timing. Kirch with a great play there to sniff and clear things out. Rose now left in a 1v3. Even if you can find this, your position's been given up. And again, that clock, as you said earlier, a fourth or fifth man working against you at any time. <laughs> not going to be one you're going to be able to take. We said Florida needed to bounce back here a little bit. And they do just that. Slice and dice. Yeah, it's tough scenes. I mean, you can kind of see it from the perspective of Beloved where he hears the footsteps underneath him. But there's so many things he has to worry about that the last thing that you look at is unfortunately the first place that you get contested, and that's off that play through the staircase. But realistically speaking, that was still a potential winnable round. Just, again, difficult when you're against numbers and the diffuse looking at you in the face. So, again, this has been a pretty good search, all things told. Yeah, small things here or there, but both teams putting up a heck of a fight. And as far as kills are concerned, a near even scoreboard between the teams. Maybe KSU with a marginal edge. 
forward to Gulf Coast defensively. Look how deep Kurch is playing with that sniper yeah. now. Not playing B side, but playing A side for the case you hit. And guess what? It's not home. And the thing is, this is just a different look to the same defensive idea that FGCU want, which is get Justin on these double doors to potentially either contest the early plant or take the long route if he wants to. I think he's going to try to play double doors. I'm being planted. Wheels, opposite angle. He's got two lined up here. Does lose a teammate in the process. Rose diving through the doorway. Doesn't surprise Wheels enough. And the double kill will be enough to also dissuade Beloved from sticking for the plant. So he's stuck inside of A, which is information that FTCU seemed pretty privy to. And yep, so it will be. First kill comes out, but there's no follow-up. And Beloved will extend his life with the region. Now down to a 1v2. And it does make you wonder, what the health advantage? You know you did damage on Beloved. You're calling for them to fly at it. You still get the round win nonetheless, but... Again, if you're calling these one shot, you'd like to see maybe a quicker follow-up to it. You get the round win regardless. Two straight as well. Four Florida. Now they put themselves up 4-3 here. Is it enough, though, to gain space? Because I'm telling you. Oh, Probably I'm, not. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, true. <laughs> Just based on how the dice gone, yeah. But honestly, I, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing from both sides. We're seeing mm -hmm. just enough variety, enough flexibility to kind of see, okay, they definitely value this, but how they're approaching it is different. You know, kind of pointing mostly towards how FGCU defensively are getting Justin forward towards a patio. ASU have done well to kind of change up the tempo on both sides of the bomb. This time it's Love trying to get a little bit aggressive over towards Barrels, but aw, oh, doesn't quite win the gunfight versus Wheels, who's on one HP. No trade to follow, and now KSU had to put together a response on B. Double stack up top. It's Phantom in the window. And nearby is Rose just playing the backside staircase. But no commitment for FGCU yet, although they are pretty <laughs> pretty committed at this point. KSU maybe want one more point of contact before they do too much of a reshuffle, but Rose not uh. going to wait for it. Maybe going to try for a route, but his bomb's going down. We'll see how much time you have to work things. You already have someone in enough to base. Though Phantom finds that kill, Justin is quickly on the move. Do you read it? I don't think you do. Justin should get good time in here, barring anything crazy. Uh, not just for one, maybe for two rows. Can he secure the trade? Doesn't matter. Snake is there to follow up. And Kirch is sniping deep. Wait a second. He is not a part of this post plant defense at the moment with him missing that first shot. He does have both sets of nades to play with, though. Frag will happen first. Dead Silence will then come into play. And then a chance for the stun also to come out. But Kirch wins the gunfight with the pistol. Leaving Rose in the 1v2. Time a problem and time will expire. Not enough to get the defuse in. And Kirch is going to beat him down to the doorway. FGCU. First cushion. Now up 5-3. And sometimes that strafe is just enough. It feels like without slide canceling. I'm getting Halo strafe sometimes out here, man. And it's frustrating. <laughs> I couldn't imagine with a pistol. Kurtz does it. Does them both dirty. <laughs> now they put themselves at map point to go up on a very, very nice 2-0. I would have loved to have been there the first time you even just had the reaction. I've just got Halo strafed. <laughs> I, jaw was on the floor. I was so mad. <laughs> we get we a slide canceling for this man, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a pretty free killer on the map anyway. Yeah, well... I don't know about that, Cash. <laughs> what do you ask? Kirch first blood. That's free kill. Love just kind of running right through his line of sight. Phantom puts together a good response, though. It takes care of Beaser on the close corner. So we stay 3v3. Bomb's still down, but largely the status has not changed except for, yep, exactly, Justin on the flank. And he's got a really solid idea that Rose is right next to him. Maybe even hearing all these jumps. Surely is now. But you don't want to give away anything too soon. And maybe patience is going to come to bite him in the rear because wheels will drop. And now Justin's kind of missed his window of opportunity. I'm going to try to get through. Walking, I guess, on different floors now. I thought side by side for a moment. Trying to get good timing on the site. Will end up. But uh, again, it's a trade across the map as Phantom's able to find one. So mm. still, life disadvantage here. A 1v2. You scoop the bomb. Quickly work over to B. Justin is in position here with Dead Silence quickly building up. Oh, and he's got a really solid read at this. The bomb's being planted. You know that you've got Rose to your right. If he can see Phantom on the cross, oh my gosh, he's got every bit of intel you could possibly want. First obstacles, getting through Rose, who's just on the other side of the pallets. Oh, they miss each other, though. Now the dead silence is earned. It doesn't matter. Wow. Yeah, 
Okay. I think if you're going back and you're VOD reviewing that, I think your teammates and maybe you yourself are sitting there saying, ah, okay, I should have just ran and gotten that free kill. Because while Justin was waiting for the perfect timing, he lost two teammates in the front of the map. And who was he waiting for the timing on Rose? And and again, if that kill was off the map, things could have looked different. But uh, again, you can nickel and dime it all you want. Either way, you still just need one round to close it out. Where <laughs> Chaos, you still need to rip off two straight to win this one. Yeah, true. And tie the series up. So you have a good advantage if you are floating off coast. But I mean, we say time and time again, and until it stops being true, we'll, we'll keep saying it. No, no lead is safe in S and D. We've seen that many a times from many different levels here in COD. Florida Gulf Coast still need to do their diligence, and yep. they're getting into the site quick. This is the first time we've seen FGCU play for a quick plant, and uh, Snake was looking to kind of wiggle on the angle, and as he does, Justin comes to challenge. These long-range shots are miraculous from Rose. And that trade is decent, but as the play on the other side of the map starts to come through, Beaser makes safe the majority of this post plant. Number two in yellow, Rose is the next one making a step around the back, while his teammate... Phantom just kind of waits for something on the backside of this play. And Rose has to go. He has to be the playmaker. Oh, nearly doesn't get through the first. But now to a 2v2. Phantom, good read on the interior. Stun will land, but while he was trying to cook up a nade, there's the rest of FGCU. Putting away map number two. Close. Really tight affair, honestly. Impressive stuff on both sides, but FGCU just a step above. And it was good to know for KSU fans that they made adjustments and they were getting round wins behind that. That's a positive sign to see this early on. The same thing could be said for Florida Gulf Coast, right? They made sure. a quick play towards the A site there in that last round to close things out. It panned out well for them. You can see their priority is definitely on getting Justin activated <laughs> in a very aggressive position. That works out for them too. But Florida Gulf Coast was a much closer one than what the hard point would have fared. We said it was... Kind of a must win for KSU coming into this one, and they don't win it. So tell me what that looks like going into map three now. Yeah, it's tough, right? Because, you know, you see some good signs of life there from KSU, saying that they could compete with these guys. But the problem is, is that is in a single life game mode where you've got likely playbook set up in some way, and we saw some of that kind of in the fold. The problem is when you start to go into respawn mode, because, I, again, I think we'll see this when we eventually get back to the scoreboard. FGCU, I think, heavily outslayed KSU in this 10-round affair. So that's problematic when you start to add in respawns. And naturally, this is the way it always goes. If you're not winning gunfights, things start to get out of hand quickly. And even on top of that, there were moments on both sides, to be fair, where some decision-making moments were kind of lost upon. So, you know, you don't see, like, a perfectly polished KSU team and if you're going to not really be able to kind of, again, you know, hold a candle to what we're seeing out of FGCU off the opening respawn, you still don't feel great about your chances of going for the reverse sweep. But you know how it goes with Modern Warfare 2. Depending on what direction the wind is blowing, you may be great or you may not be all that great. It's just one of those things. And we're going to LSE low for map three control with how 50-50 these play at times offensively and defensively. You couldn't really ask for a better mode to kick off a potential reverse sweep. So you know, the hard points look a little dire for KSU. You go to a more neutral respawn where, uh, again, you fair, you always have a chance. But we talked about it coming into map two. Still, the trading and the ability to, you know, first bloods at times were a little split right below within sure, yeah, the action yeah. early on. And Florida Gulf Coast able to kind of win them out there at the end. But again, the ability to trade, the ability to keep yourself out of 1v1 situations is where KSU kind of ran out of gas and ran yeah, out of steam well. there at the end of things. Not grossly outslayed to an extent, but uh, again, Florida still having that edge once again. Yeah, and unfortunate that scoreboard didn't really give us a true look at the first blood category, because I'm glad you started to segue towards that, because that was what I was going to look at immediately upon seeing the scoreboard, mm -hmm. but hopefully I know that Binox is aware. Hopefully we'll get an adjustment for that as we continue forward into the season. Uh, but yeah, like you mentioned, it's not a gross amount of outslaying, but the amount of convincing rounds for FGCU comparatively were definitely... I think stacked towards the Eagles' favor. So with that in mind, it's a 2-0 affair here through two, favoring that of FGCU. Kennesaw State would have to put together a reverse sweep. Otherwise, their qualification run would have to be done solely by the lower bracket. We'll step away for a brief break and come back with the LSU Little Control right after this. Welcome back there, friends. A convincing tally in the map count for FGCU, and that's reinforced after a dominant map number one. But Kennesaw State are here to fight, and we got wind of that in the LSC Low Surge. Problem is, Cash, ah, you got a reverse sweep. And that means you have to win back-to-back -back respawns against an FGCU team that's looking pretty feisty. Tell you that much. 
And we're staying on El Asilo, where, uh, again, if they had a map mode combo that, uh, at least of what we've seen, looks more promising for them, sure, I would definitely want to be put here if I am a KSU fan or even player. But it's one where they, they can't show much more faltering. We, we saw signs of life at the hard point, even more so in that 6 4 loss to the surge. All of it needs to come to a head here in map three if you want to kick off this reverse sweep and get yourself a little momentum garnered going into a map four that will not be easy as you said back-to-back -back respawns have to be one it's not going to be easy with how florida has come out and played here so this map three oh so critical and oh, oh yeah. so necessary for you to keep alive in the series <laughs> absolutely the case okay that's the frame up for you again <laughs> no statistics to go off of <laughs> so don't look for us for that yet soon friends very soon we're loading on in ella Silo control do or die time well again i'm not that quite <laughs> do or die or time <laughs> for KSU fans out there. Like you mentioned, just don't want to have to go through a very treacherous lower bracket to earn a spot in Division Two. Whereas for FGCU, they'll be knocking on the door of qualification. Would have to still win one more match to get there. Here we go. Right off the rip, it's Florida Gulf Coast on the offense. Snake first and second blood leads to KSU dominating the bottom side of the warehouses and. Wow, this is great control of the map for the Owls. The Snake is still finding kills around the map. In the spawn trap, we've seen time and time again how devastating it can be for an offensive team. You really get to dictate where you want to funnel them through, and that's all going to be based on where Snake is playing. I mean, with the Fasnev at 40, 50 meters, shooting players in the back, Phantom chopping them down as well. You have Rose in a position to know if this push is coming through. And well, until you take care of Snake in your back lines, he's going wow. to be a thorn in your side already with a cruise missile. Okay. That's a heck of a first life. <laughs> Say that much. Absolutely. And they may need to actually possibly call this out here. And I believe Snake may be calling it in. He's sitting in spawn at the moment. Prone. Here's the cruise missile. Cru and that's going to be denied by the trophy system. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Still members for FGCU on. That'll lead to a nade being called in. But Kirch could just step foot onto the zone or wait for a teammate to do so. And an extra 60 seconds is going to get tallied. That is not what you want to see after a fantastic first life from Snake. That's exactly what I was going to say. Things could not have gone in a more polarizing direction after that opening life. You invest a streak, you still give up the point, and now with 90 seconds or so to work with, Florida Gulf Coast you get the chance to work at their closer point. Hey, as you need to find form and find form quickly. Yeah, I'll say. For Florida punish you more so than they have. Maybe just somebody besides Snake needs to start getting involved in the kill feed because FGCU are starting to turn this life lead around. Not that it would be much of a win condition at the moment considering there's still 60 plus seconds. Double stack on towards A. Beloved's got a sub from this tower position. He's got to come in and try to contest. Dances around a couple of different eagles, but does not find a single kill. So now Rose up top has to commit, but the Semtex takes him down. Second ticket progress is in at FGCU. All of a sudden, could be looking to possibly take this round away. Justin on four. And oh no, oh no, oh no. That is not what you want to see if you're KSU. A great first life leads to two straight captures out of Florida Gulf Coast. And with that, the round. And the timing of all of it, so, so poor with, you think you can invest a streak because, well, yeah, you had to, you got wiped off the B point and maybe they don't have trophies yet. They get the trophy down just before and everything just kind of goes into a dumpster fire after that. It's, it's tough for KSU. I, th I think mentally that does more than what the scoreboard will show. I agree. Hopefully they have enough to bounce back here because, well, you need to make a defensive or excuse me, make an offensive attack stick for you. You don't want to give Florida any more of an advantage in this control yeah. than that opening break play. It's just, it's always tough when you see six kills off a of first life and then you follow up the rest of the round as a team and only get eight. Mm -hmm. Never great news. And after you see you off the break, get the first three kills, and now KSU have to work their way out of spawn. Dire Straits early here as Wheels has also got the Death Silence to control this back play. Nice long range shots. Gets out of dodge as well. Are you kidding me? Rose finally tracks him up. So a chance for KSU to make their way towards B. But a secondary flank is on the way. Beasters are on the back now all of a sudden. Trophy system, I believe, just got down for KSU. And this stack is going to lead to a first tick of progress. Yeah, trophy system is down. Hurts only gets a single kill. Now Beaster has to go. Fortunately, Justin and Wheels from the front do find the kills. And will be locked into another defensive hold, only giving away one tick of progress. I like the diagonal slash. Florida made back across the map to try to get these players quickly cut off spawn. Unfortunately, though, the two 
uh, most advanced players get cut down, so that'll give a little more of an opening towards KC to get towards this A site. But with time starting to become a factor, if you get wiped once more, Florida simply would have to mm -hmm. hold preems at either of these sites. A good positioning out of KSU, at least towards this A site, but it's just a matter of almost when Florida want to collapse. What can they find? Wheel's going to get things started. Teammates in tow going to connect as well. Just one player left. And would you look at that B, sir, in your top building? Got to clear him out before he can get anywhere else. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I, I again, I just kind of, I hate to say the word surprise, but it is really kind of awesome to see the timing of these break attempts from FGCU. I mean, we saw it a little bit on Embassy. Not that they were required to break too often, but right there, the setup is perfect. They have all the angles they want. And then you can feel whoever IGLs for this team, someone's saying go, and everyone hits at the same time, and KSU just cannot respond to it. Second so thing of progress, though, still being captured. Snake's able to help get forward a little bit. Not a lot of time on the clock, so this has to be a successful hit for KSU. And largely, it is just Snake by himself, but based on that first life, you start to think maybe he'll be enough. Second tick of progress, locked in. Phantom now here to assist. Wheels from the side, clears the zone. But there are so many owls that can jump on Try to get work to make this an extra 60 seconds with a five life lead. It looks like FGCU will say, have it. We'll play for exit. b opens up with two. Justin going to try to connect for the third and does. One player left playing around tower. Maybe closer than Justin realizes, but I think the snap will be good. And it is. Connect for the fourth. Now all these players coming up off spawn. What positioning do you want to take? Sure, you get another 60 seconds if you're KSU, but that was a hard earned A site. <laughs> yeah. Job doesn't get any easier over here, B. No, in fact, it gets harder. At least you have a tick. <laughs> At least you have a tick, exactly. Justin down low. I think he's got an idea on Phantom. Yep, good team shots coming through. So confirms the kill, no problem. Three for two, the kill feed snake one. Last one left, and down low, he tries to force the gunfight and nearly takes down B, sir. But now you're down to your final four lives in your last 18 seconds. Still doable, don't get me wrong. You have to be clean on this break. And I'm the first one forward. Has a pretty solid read on Kirch nearby, but the stuns, the nades are all landing. Clock continues to tick away. Rose, this route's a decent one, but can he get here to actually turn it into progress? That's the question. Is he now by himself and now cannot stand tall inside the zone? FGCU up two. One round away. I'm shutting the door on this series in the face of KSU. And I think, as you had talked about, just that break on the A site. It comes down to the coordination, the discipline, and the timing of it all. And sometimes timing doesn't sound all that important, but you think of when timings go horribly, you would think that it's three to three or four different plays happening around the map. That's yeah. how much timing matters at times. And then for Florida, whenever you do it all together, it looks like a cohesive, um, well thought out play. And and when you execute behind it again, intention and execution. I think Florida and their respawns, Florida Gulf Coast, have had both yeah. on their side very much. Yeah, good call. I like it. Now back to the offense, go up to CU. Taking their time, no kills, no gunfights yet, just lots of nades. Snake finally able to get involved on the first blood engagement, but comes out unfavorably as we go two for two. No real status of the map has changed, though, on those opening engagements, so KSU off the respawn will be fine. Just going to go to a 2-2 split, try to get a read on what FGCU want to do here. A lot of time off the clock already, though, and the Eagles need to start actually putting those wings into flight here as they start to make their way over towards A. Justin, trying to get aggressive, sniff out a player, closing in on a teammate, able to snap to spawn, not able to connect though, Rosa won that with the pack. You have one player stopping the clock, earning some progress, but the collapse quickly coming in for Kennesaw State. All of your efforts so concentrated over to B, and again, a, a tick coming in, a two-man stack, maybe three in a moment, but Phantom able to chop that down. Collapse coming in once again, the more time that gets eaten off, the more benefits KSU, <laughs> yeah. and if they can find these trades at good times... They're sitting well enough. Second ticket progress looks like the lock. KSU are likely going to have to concede the rest of this zone. And yeah, it looks like based on how they're coming out of spawn, they will try to set something up over towards A. Okay, so a minute 45 now. Two ticks of progress is what stands between FGCU and a very swift 3-0 in this series. KSU, this would have to be what we call the Omega reverse sweep. Have to do a little mini reverse sweep here in the control and then full, follow it up with a map 4, map 5 win. And, well, based on how the kills are going, it's not looking that good for it. Yeah, and now you're on the zone. Three members strong. Second tick is in. Third on the way, although that's not the greatest team name you've ever seen. And Phantom does have a chance at Chow this. Down low needs to double up. Only gets one. And the third tick of progress will be locked. 
It's Florida Gulf Coast locking in a 3-0, sending KSU down to the lower bracket. Florida Gulf Coast looking like the more prepared team you'd said coming into it, who has kind of that preparedness on hand, who's been putting in more reps. A team that wants to make this run as well easy for themselves as they can as possible. Just a couple more wins needed to qualify for Division Two. I mean, as far as respawn performances go, I mean, Justin at double positive wheels with insane number of engagements with 30 engagements there on LSC. They'll just do three rounds. So everyone doing their part, looking about as well oiled of a machine as you can this early on in the season. Yep. I, I was about to say the exact same thing. We're seeing it on pretty much all fronts. Small things in the search and destroy, but I think largely speaking, those are pretty easy to get by. Uh, it's just the impressiveness in the respawn is going to make these guys a major threat um, as they continue to make their way through this particular uh, qualification bracket. Uh, it, you know, that's just not great news for anybody who stands in their way. Um, looking through it, it looks like FGCU will play the winner of JCSU and Old Dominion. Uh, so that's, I would have to figure, um, around that FGC you're going to be feeling pretty good about. Um, you win that one, by the way, and you will be qualified. So it's all about what happens here on winners round three to qualify in. Um, otherwise, everyone else is going to have to make their way down through the lower bracket. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's one of those things. It's, it's always tough to get a full read on, but... I, I will say it's looking like FGCU are going to be a major threat and likely going to have a pretty smooth ride to qualification based on what we saw here in the response. Absolutely. And they'll continue to be a threat. Well beyond qualifiers, which I, I'm looking at the scoreboard here noticing Justin started 0-4. Yeah. Finished 19-8. Yep. Yep. Um, kind of kind of gross. But small. Yeah, yeah small that's, just, that's just that's just a small little slice. Okay, 16-8. 16-8. Either way, um, fantastic. Out of Florida Gulf Coast, we can't sing the praise enough. And then for KSU, even then, as much as it was a tough 3-0 loss for them, the things that are, you know, needing to be fixed are, are very much manageable and correctable. It's not like sure. they were doing anything so horrendously wrong that there's no hope. It is just a, a longer, slightly longer list of things to, to correct, but nothing that, that can't be through repetition and through practice. So I have no, no doubts in my mind that KSU don't continue to show upward trajectory beyond this point they still have the losers bracket run that they can make mm -hmm. and they still have a chance to qualify which you know they definitely are going to want to it's going to be that slightly harder route as we said florida gulf coast more than a threat and i just i mean voting, voting the staff that they put up in these respawns it's, it's for, for how dominant the performance was and they still put up some of the numbers <laughs> that they did and it's crazy oh for sure and that's encouraging stuff for a team that again is largely back for another year trying to improve on where they left off of from the previous so well prepared well oiled and it's looking like all four members a major threat for fgcu that's a look back at the series a convincing map number one Back and forth affair until it wasn't. Last two rounds going the way FGCU on the LC low search. And then, yeah, the LC low control from pretty much start to finish was all FGCU. No worries there whatsoever. So they move on. A chance for qualification still on the line tonight. As we look back over how the bracket will work out. Yeah, okay, so we did get the update. It is Old Dominion that will be facing up against them. That is another returning squad over the last, I believe, two years, if not three, for College Cod. A team that continues to also kind of supply uh, progress from year to year. Well, that's a tough test in front of you with FGCU kind of standing in your way. Winner of that one does qualify. Either team. I could see punching the ticket, but as far as recency bias is concerned, I mean, you're going to need to put up a lot to slow down Florida. I don't anticipate them having much of a fall off from series to series, um, but with both teams returning, like you said, making such a, a building statement on what they were able to do last year, that's going to be an exciting matchup to watch regardless of what stage of the season we're in. So excited to see what the final score ends up being of that one and who kind of can get in through that winner's bracket advantage. So now to tease our final matchup of the evening, our winner's round three matchup travels to another different region. We're going to the Midwest. We'll be taking a look at Midway University after they 3 0 Michigan State. They'll be playing up against a Canadian favorite in the University of Windsor. Before we head off, though, again, I want to give another shout-out over to America's Navy and Fandom for bringing together, again, some more support for the collegiate scene. And you got, you got to check out America's Navy with all the things they've got going on because the Navy is going to allow you a chance to earn college education at their expense. When you enlist, you can attend classes even while on the ship. The Navy also offers world-class training using cutting-edge equipment and technology. And to prepare to enlist... Men and women to maximize their potential. 
uh, throughout their entire stay with America's Navy. And of course, with that, hey, a quick shout out. We haven't really spent a lot of time talking about it, but the Goats and Glory, the Navy's esports team, is providing a platform for people to engage with sailors and learn more about opportunities the Navy provides while sharing a mutual passion for gaming. Ultimately, the team shows that sailors are just like everyone else. They have hobbies, interests, families. Being in the Navy doesn't preclude those things. So an opportunity to kind of get a feel for what the America's Navy has to offer before a full enlistment maybe possibly comes your way, but learn more by heading over to americasnavy.com while we send over to a break and we get ready for our final matchup of the evening. We're back. Don't go far.